Our parasha begins where Hashem tells Moshe to command the sons of Aaron concerning the sacrifices, and in particular, the burnt offering. And the word that's used, in fact, it is the name of the parasha, it's tzav. You must command the Kohanim. It's a very strong word. Sometimes the Torah will use amar, say to them, diber, speak to them. But here at tzav, you must command them. Why does it use this word? And Rashi, quoting our sages, tells us as follows, that people need to, they need far more encouragement when it comes to a mitzvah in which they will suffer a financial loss. Hence the word tzav. You must command them. You must encourage them. Because with this mitzvah, there's a financial loss. Why? They don't get anything from it. When it came to the burnt offering, the Kohanim didn't get any meat from it whatsoever. Not so the sin offering, not so the shlamim, the peace offering, or even the guilt offering. But with the ola, they got nothing from it whatsoever. And when you tell a person to do something, and they're not going to benefit from it whatsoever, they're a little bit more sluggish. They're not that interested. And therefore, you have to encourage them. No, this is something you have to do. And if we look in Pirke Avot, it tells us some very important piece of advice. It says, Le'olam, a person should be mechashev, hefseid mitzvah keneged schara. Consider the loss of a mitzvah compared to its gain, its reward, and consider the gain of a sin compared to its loss. We always have to be weighing things up throughout our lives. When we come to doing a mitzvah, we think to ourselves, why should I do this mitzvah? Why should I do this commandment? What am I going to get from it? I'm not going to get paid. In fact, on the contrary, I'm going to actually lose. I have to buy a lulav. It costs a lot of money. I have to build a sukkah. I need a new pair of tefillin. All of these things cost a lot of money. I'm not gaining anything. Where's the gain? There's loss. Sometimes a mitzvah requires that we have to give up time. We have to go visit somebody who's sick. We have to come to shul. It's going to cost us in time and it's going to cost us in energy. And therefore the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot says, you know what? You have to do a little balancing over here. It's true. There is a loss, but there's also an incredible gain. There is a reward for doing a mitzvah that cannot be fathomed by a human being. In the next world, as it says later in Pirkei Avot, a person cannot imagine even one second of joy and pleasure in the world to come. So yes, you're going to lose now, but you're going to gain in the long term. So think about the long term. But of course, the opposite is true, says that same mission in Pirkei Avot. Consider the gain of a sin compared to the loss. A person is about to do something wrong. They're going to cheat somebody. They're going to make some money fraudulently. Or perhaps they're going to go out and have some type of a dalliance, some adulterous affair. And you know what? It's going, to be, it's going to be enjoyable. It's going to be nice. They're going to really have a great time. But that's only then. But what are going to be the consequences of doing that? So, certainly in the world to come, but even in this world. What if they're found out? Think of the embarrassment. Maybe they'll be arrested. Maybe they'll become a criminal. And therefore the Mishnah says, consider for a moment, yes, you're going to benefit right now. You're going to get enjoyment right now. You're going to get pleasure in the moment. But what's going to happen later on? Our entire lives must be in this way, considering what we're gaining and what we're losing. And this is what our parasha means. You, Moshe, speak to the Kornim and say to them, Tzav, I command you. Yes, it's true. You're not getting anything right now. You're going to, in fact, lose out. You're going to work in the temple, and you're not going to get anything from the sacrifice. But there is a reward. And that reward may not come to you today or tomorrow or even the next day or perhaps not in this life. It may even be in the world to come. But consider that. Let that be your motivation. And this is the calculation we have to make throughout our lives. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.